Hey there everybody, welcome to yet another one of our preparatory videos. This video is going to deal particularly with the skills that you're going to need for your upcoming trails guide course with us and it deals with the speed shooting techniques. Now this is not going to be a comprehensive video and this is also not a my way or the highway, there's many different ways of achieving the same thing. I'm just showing you the way that we've developed over the last 20 years and how we at African Guide Academy teach people. While there are many different variations on the theme, please understand that there are some fundamental principles that you do need to obey in order to shoot faster and to shoot more accurately. So I'm going to divide this video into three different sections. The first section is simply going to be getting the weapon up to the eye. When I say simply, there's a fair amount that's involved with doing that smoothly. Then secondly, we're going to talk just briefly about lining up your sight and aiming, and then we're going to go into the pulling of the trigger, the reload, aim, and hold. All right, well, I hope we don't have any interruptions. It's a dark and stormy day here in the African bush. Um, let's crack on with getting the weapon under the eye. Let me take a couple of steps back for you. All right, so if you're on a Fagasa course with us, you're going to have to shoot with a weapon in the non-shooting hand. I always like students uh, to prepare this way. The Botswana Qualification Authority allows you to shoot with it in either hand. But here we go. So the weapon's in my non-shooting hand. The move starts with two basic things. Firstly, I want to get onto the front foot. And at the same time, I'm going to bring my weapon around and I'm going to load it here. Now you may wonder why lock it under my arm to load and why not bring it around here, which without locking, I can chamber the round quicker and be coming up. It's a valid question, but what we have found is that because this weapon weighs over five kilograms, when you load the weapon here, because the bolt is not situated midway on the rifle, it causes this lateral swing. Now, obviously I'm exaggerating that, but th th this weapon weighs over five kilograms. So this lateral swing, because of the inertia, takes me a while to settle. So I'm now dealing both with variation on the vertical as well as on the horizontal axis in terms of accuracy. The other thing that makes this locking and loading here make more sense is from the point that I'm here now, I know exactly where my rifle barrel is aimed and I'm ready to shoot. Sometimes when you come around the corner and there's a lioness and she's on her cubs, you don't get the government regulation eight seconds or 10 seconds, whichever drill you're shooting to shoot the animal. Sometimes it, you're literally going to be shooting it off your muzzle. So when you train, get used to from this point, once you chamber it around, you should already be aiming at your target. So I'm looking at my target right now, nothing else. I'm looking at my target and I'm trying to keep my weapon lined up with my target as I bring the weapon up to my eye. Now you'll see my shooting pose here. This arm, my left arm, is locked almost vertically down and my right arm is horizontal. This is the most stable shooting pose from the side. You'll see it looks like this. I'm locked and my weight is on the front foot. Okay, so when I talk about bringing the weapon under my eye, so much of shooting is about keeping your head still, not dipping in your action when you load and not bringing your eye to the weapon. A lot of people load the, the rifle here on the outside of their shoulder. Firstly, your recoil is much worse when you do this. Um, and if your arm goes backwards, it can literally slide down your bicep. You're basically making <laughs> corrugations as it goes. And I can tell you that is incredibly painful. So it's important to bring the weapon in here. And I'm gonna bring the weapon right under my eye. So let's do that once again, all the way to the eye. I'm gonna do this and under my eye like that, yeah. All right, I'm now ready to shoot. So once we've brought the weapon up, we're now going to deal a little bit with the aiming. Obviously, I need to make sure that I get my sight on the brain of the animal. Now there's three obvious focal points. The first, the brain of the animal. I'm not just looking at the animal, I'm looking at the brain of the animal. That's something you need to train yourself to do. The second thing I'm looking at here, this is my foresight over here. And this here, is my rear sight, sorry. <laughs> okay, so that there's my rear sight. And you can see it's got a little V in it there, yeah? So what I wanna do, I keep my foresight slightly higher than my rear sight, because if I bring my rear sight up, 
and I'm looking through my rear sight, this part of my weapon is blocking the view that I have of the animal. So with my foresight slightly up onto that animal and then I'm just dropping it into the V and I'm ready to go. So that is how we're going to line the sights up before we now get to the third part of this video. And some of you may be saying, well, you shouldn't be pulling the trigger, you should be squeezing the trigger. Understand that in these assessments, we are shooting between 15 and 10 meters. Very often in real situations in the bush, we're shooting even a little bit closer than that. So we do need to pull the trigger, but we don't yank the trigger. So I'm going to show you the trigger pull action. So as a sniper, you'd obviously breathe out, still your heart and squeeze. We don't have time for that. All I'm going to simply do is close my hand. See, there's no movement. I'm not yanking the rifle. I'm not using my body to pull the rifle. I'm simply closing my hand like that. There is a little bit of movement of the weapon, obviously, but over a 10 or 15 meter distance, that is making the difference of a couple of millimeters. And if your accuracy is good enough, that shouldn't be throwing you off the brain. All right, so here we go. Weapon in the non-shooting hand, and I'm going to bring the weapon around now, all the way up into the shoulder, bang, reload, aim, and hold. Okay, it doesn't matter how you practice for this, whether you do it with a broomstick, whether you do it with an air rifle, or whatever you do it with. There are two vital things that you need to remember to put into your training. The one is the bolt action here. A lot of people train with an air rifle or whatever it might be, and they just practice bringing it up to the eye. What happens is when you get to the range, you then bring the weapon up to the eye and you pull and pull and pull and nothing happens because you haven't chambered around and you haven't loaded the firing pin. So it's vitally important. The second is the moment you pull that trigger, reload, aim and hold. Always reload, aim and hold. Reload, aim and hold. There's not a single one of your assessments that you're going to be shooting where you're not going to either reload, aim and fire or reload, aim and hold. The stopwatch only stops the moment your finger is on the trigger and you've reloaded and you are aimed on the appropriate target. In Mother Nature, when this happens, let's hope it never happens to any of you out there, but when you are in a situation, if you pull the trigger and you're watching that animal go down and you don't reload, aim and hold, and you suddenly peripherally become aware of an animal charging from here, this is nothing more than a club. So if in any vital situation, you're going to reload, aim and hold. You're going to make sure that the situation is absolutely safe with your guest behind you. And only once you've cleared that situation, does the weapon then come out of your shoulder and immediately you're going to go back into carry mode. So there's no reason in any practice that you're doing that you're not going to reload, aim and hold in the shoulder. I'm going to show you one thing that I do, which is a little bit different from most people, is the way that I do the reload uh, in the shoulder. I like to cant my weapon slightly away from my face. So you watch here as I pull the trigger, bang, as I reload, I tilt the weapon a little bit like that. That is because in the past, when I was trying to shoot much faster than I was capable of, I would often do this and hit myself in the face and it started causing a bit of a flinch. And the moment you close your eyes, if a lion or a leopard's coming at you at 22, 24 meters a second, the moment you close your eyes or flinch or do anything like that, that animal has moved a significant distance and you've got to reform the whole mental image in your mind and you don't have time for that. So I like to just cant my rifle a little bit away from my face as I pull the trigger, bang, like that. And as I push forward, my weapon comes straight again. A couple of things I want to talk to you about. Firstly, the safety catch. This is the safety catch on this weapon. So when I pull the safety back, if I do that, and I pull the safety catch back, you'll see it doesn't detonate, yeah? So what happens sometimes is people just put that forward, their hand comes like this, and they pull, and you see how my safety's gone back now. Now I go forward, and now I'm trying to shoot the charging animal, and nothing happens. Very, very awkward silence, let me tell you. Okay, so we as walking guides, we never use the safety. And a lot of people have said to me, well, why don't you take it off? If you're not going to use it, take it off. And then students don't end up failing their assessments because of the safety catch. 
there's a very good and very simple reason. The reason we don't take it off is because you may end up one day walking with a friend's rifle or a rifle at a lodge that you're not familiar with. And if you don't know that your hand is moving along and possibly engaging a safety that was there, you don't get to train that out of yourself. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that bolt action, how we load this bolt. So there are two ways of thinking. Some people like to grab the bolt like this in their fist, like that. You see that keeps me a long way away from the safety and down. I don't particularly like that action myself. I prefer the open hand there. I give myself enough space that I'm clear of the safety and then change my hand forward and down. I find that much smoother. What we're trying to aim for is economy of movement. And I find the whole economy of movement of that muscle memory is much better than gripping the bolt and pulling it like that. I also find we, one of the things we'll talk about in future videos is uh, dealing with jams. When you grab the bolt here, you can see now I'm, I'm not flowing down the line. I'm not pushing the bolt back down the line. I'm pushing it here and we sometimes get that. It, it, it jams because this is a straight bolt trying to go down a straight tube and we're pushing from an angle. So you'll get this kind of jam and you also get this wiggle of the barrel. So I far prefer that action and I find I have fewer jams and fewer issues with it. All right, so we're going to go from the beginning. I'm going to step back a little bit. All right, I'm going to take you through this just from the front and then from the side so you can see it for yourself. If we're going to do a quick kill exercise, it's going to be two shots and then aim and hold. So I'm going to come from here. I bring the weapon around, up, bang, bang, and hold. Yeah. Now, from the side view, I'm just going to step a little bit further back so you can see me. From the side view, weapon in my non-shooting hand. Okay, so as I come forward and I load, all of my weight is on my front foot. My head is in line with my shoulders, in line with my knee, in line with my foot. I bring the weapon up into this position and I can literally lift my back leg off the ground. This means that all of my weight is on the front foot. This weapon kicks like a mule. So if my weight is here or here, as it kicks, it's going to knock me up like this and then I'm in a very, very disadvantageous position to get back for my second shot. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you have found it highly informative and I hope it helps you to prepare yourself for this upcoming Trails Guide course with us. If you're not booked on a Trails Guide course with us, consider coming on a Trails Guide course with us. There is no more beautiful place on earth and the Okavango Delta to come and approach potentially dangerous animals and learn the art of being a guide on foot. Thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe and we'll see you at proper training camp.